Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the 8th lecture of uh, Tripoli 23. And we're still going to be discussing on steady magnetic fields. But this time, we'll be looking at the interaction of magnetic fields in our particles, on, on our particles. All right. So the topics of this uh, lecture is outlined below, as you can see. Magnetic force and magnetic torque, boundary conditions, magnetic circuits, and inductance. Okay. This first part of the video lecture uh, will be the last uh, topic for the second long exam. And that is until uh, the magnetic force and magnetic torque. So this is part one of uh, lecture eight. Part two uh, will be included in the third exam. Okay. So lecture eight, we have uh, steady magnetic fields, all right. So uh, let's consider first. Let's uh, put them side by side, the electrostatics and magnetostatics. So there's a magnetic force and there's also an electric force. The magnetic force, oh, sorry, the electric force is caused by the presence of an electric field, just because we have uh, charges that ha that are positive. We actually uh, create repulsion between them. We have charges that have with opposite signs, a positive and a negative. We create attraction between them. So it's defined by Coulomb's law. And the force is equal to Q multiplied to the electric field. In terms of the magnetic field, however, so uh, the magnetic field only exerts effort or only exerts force if a charge is already moving. So if a charge is already moving, then the force due to the magnetic field is defined by this equation, QV cross B. So uh, the force is due to the magnetic flux, density B, not the magnetic field intensity. So that's one major difference between your electric field and magnetic field. Your electric field uh, needs electric field intensity to create a force, but for your uh, magnetic field, well, uh, you need a magnetic flux density, B, to create a force. Okay. So the direction of the force is also weird. It's not aligned with the magnetic field or the velocity. It's actually perpendicular to both, that being a cross product of your V and B. So it follows the right-hand rule. Compared to the force of the electric field, the force of the electric field is uh, the same is in the same direction due to the uh, with the electric field. So if we have an uh, electro electro electric field and a magnetic field field, excuse me. The total force so looks like this. Okay? So an electric field is uh, the force due to the electric field plus the force due to the magnetic field. If we substitute that to, on the same charge we have this expression right here and this is the Lorentz force equation so some example so a cyclotron all right so the cyclotron is actually a, a vacuum tube excuse me if I remember correctly yes so these are the details of how a cyclotron works So between the two cyclotron, uh, the two uh, the, cy the cyclotron is actually uh, two magnets. Okay, there are two magnets, right? The two magnets, uh, two sets of magnets, uh, creates a magnetic field, a constant magnetic field between them, in one direction, right here, uniform magnetic field. Okay, and then. If we uh, fire an electron from here to here, okay, so let me just clean that. If we fire an electron from here to here, the, uh, the magnetic field will actually redirect the path of the electron and fire it in another way, in the other way around. Okay. So it is fired in this direction. So it will enter the uh, will enter the sorry will enter the uh, the area here 
and there will be no more magnetic field here therefore the electron exits right so that's uh, I actually started on the wrong part so uh, electron is injected at this point okay it will be fired to the uniform magnetic field at this point and this uniform magnetic field will redirect the uh, electron okay redirect the electron and it's fired here okay again it redirects the electron it's fired here redirects the electron okay until it picks up speed so it picks up speed just cycles around and then at this point it has a it's very fast okay and when it's fired from this point then it will be very fast so it will be output uh, it will be uh, ejected very fast from the cyclotron okay all right so uh, imagine then if you have a differential current element so uh, what is the force if there's a magnetic field uh, an external magnetic field not due to the current so let's consider then a uh, current element. So the force due to a uh, magnetic field exerted on moving charges confined in a conductor. This is your differential current element. Uh, the force is collectively transferred to the conductor itself. So you have a very uh, dif uh, distribution of charges that are moving with a velocity v. And uh, this distribution of charges is actually rho v dv okay since uh, j is equal to rho v times v this times this and this is just scalar so you can just flip it around and you'll get this expression for the differential force on a differential current element so it's j cross b times dv and uh, as we remember uh, jv calls kds it's equal to IDL. So uh, other forms of your uh, force due to a magnetic field becomes this, these expressions right here. IDL cross B and K cross B. Right. For a closed circuit, the force is the closed loop integral of IDL cross B. So we just flip that around, it becomes negative I closed loop integral of B cross DL. For a closed circuit. So if we have an, a volumetric, uh, volumetric, uh, sorry, we have a char current density, we have a sheet current, well, it becomes a volumetric integral or a sh uh, surface integral. Okay. So uh, to get the direction of the, uh, the force, well, you just have to use your right hand rule. Okay. So, uh, the thumb is actually where the uh, where the force is point where the force is where the force is pointing or the direction of the force, and uh, you point your uh, pointing finger on the direction of the electric current. So you point your pointing finger the direction of the electric current, and you rotate it to, to where the direction of the magnetic field is. Okay, you rotate it to where the direction of the magnetic field is, where your thumb is. That is the direction of the force. So as you can see here. So point the pointing finger here. Curl your arm. At that direction is the magnetic field. And where your thumb is, well, that is the direction of the force. Okay? So for example, so consider a square loop of wire. This one. And a current carrying filament. This one. So, solve for the magnetic force on the square loop. Okay. So, the electric field, sorry, magnetic field due to the filament is this. Since it's lying on the xy plane, the direction of the magnetic field, so, uh, okay. We have this direction of the current. The magnetic field flows like this. Okay. So at this point, the magnetic field is only in the AZ direction, right here. So 
only in the AZ direction. Okay. And then, uh, it since the distance from here to here is defined by x, it becomes i over 2 pi x times AZ hat, the direction. Okay. The current is 15 amperes. Just substitute that. You get this expression for your magnetic field intensity. So next is you get the magnetic flux density, which is equal to mu sub 0 times h becomes this expression. Okay. And finally, okay, um, you have this expression for the magnetic flux density. Right, so it's a closed loop, and there's a current there, which is 2 milliamperes. So we have to use uh, the f this expression for the total force. It's a loop integral. And there's a constant current uh, flowing through the loop. Right, so it looks like this. So substitute that. So it's negative 2 milliamperes times 3 times 10 to the minus 6. So that's factored out. B cross DL. This loop has four paths. So your integral inside is actually uh, divided into four. From x is equal to 1 to 3. So that's from here to here. From y equals 0 to 2. That's from here to here. And now from x equals, uh, sorry, x equals 1 to 3. From here to here. Okay, and the path is negative dx, x hat. And uh, y equals 0 to 2. That's from here to here. Okay, so those are the four paths. Okay. So uh, if you solve all these, so it's just easy integration, all right? So easy integration, I'll call it the total force is equal to negative 8 ax hat pico newtons. So uh, let's interpret that. The force actually pulls this uh, loop current inwards towards the uh, towards the filament, the current carrying filament. So now let's look at the force between two uh, differential current elements. So the magnetic flux, first let's look at the magnetic flux density of uh, on element 2 due to element 1. So at element 1 creates a magnetic flux density on element 2. So that is the differential magnetic field is equal to the current on element 1 cross the distance vector of your uh, between 1 and 2 divided by 4 pi times the magnitude of the distance squared if we if uh, if it's in magnetic flux density just multiply mu sub 0 becomes this expression and then there's uh, the mag a magnetic force on element 2 due to it having a current since it ha it has moving charges this uh, this <clears throat> This uh, differential element here exerts effort on this differential element here. So the differential force on element two is equal to the current on element two times the direction times dl two cross b one, which is the uh, field due to element one. Okay. So it becomes this expression right here. This is the force. Okay. Sorry. There you go. So uh, this is the first expression. So let, let me repeat that. Sorry. Let, let me repeat this. So uh, first, we have a magnetic field due to element 1. That is on the area of element 2. On the vicinity of element 2. This magnetic field intensity creates a magnetic flux density. And a force is exerted here since there are moving charges. And the force, the differential force, is defined by this. If we take the uh, differential of this expression above, okay, the differential of this expression above becomes this. Since I2 dl2 is constant, 
at this case at this point uh, we're gonna only we're only gonna get the differential of the magnetic field of uh, b1 okay since this is constant already so we'll only be getting a differential of this uh, substituting that from this expression we get this and this is the double differential of the force. So, uh, considering then the whole current carrying element, so the whole current carrying, carrying element, so we're gonna get the, uh, the effect of this uh, whole element right here on the differential length right here. So we're getting the closed loop integral okay, of your uh, magnetic field to get the magnetic field, total magnetic field due to this current carrying loop. And to get the total force, we're going to get the uh, closed loop integral of this expression right here to get the total force on this loop. Okay? So factoring out the constants, it becomes this. Okay, and some manipulation right here. Uh, this expression inside, sorry, becomes this right here. Okay. So how did this happen? Well, we could just flip this. So it becomes negative cross product of let me just write it in a word so you can visualize it better. Okay. So our current uh, current expression for the force is equal to There you go. Times the closed loop integral. Closed loop integral of the expression DL2 cross closed loop integral of DL1 cross. There you go. Divided by this is the current expression. So this loop is integrated on uh, the loop L1. This loop is integrated on the loop L2. So applying uh, some manipulations so we can get a better uh, expression. And then we have this. Let me just copy this first. All right. So we just flip the, these two terms. All right. Oops. But since it's a cross product, this becomes negative. All right. Then lastly. We flip these two terms. Wait, sorry. There you go. And cross product. Since it's a cross product, it will be negative. This negative will become positive. Okay. Since R12 is constant, we can factor that out. There you go. And we'll be left with this expression inside. Okay? So, comes something like this. Okay? And we can factor out this L2 right here, outside, and we have this expression right here. 
Okay? So that is what we got here in the slides. Right here. Okay? Alright. So for example, we have two infinite parallel filaments with opposing currents. We have opposing currents here and here. Determine the magnetic force per unit length between these two wires. Okay? So, um, so each of these filaments are actually experiencing force due to each other. So, kind of like your charges. Okay? So, kind of like your charges. So, because the presence of each other, you're uh, already experiencing force. But here, the driving element, the driving, uh, driving field is the magnetic field. So the uh, magnitude of the magnetic field at two due to the current from one. Okay. So let this be one, and let this be two. Is equal to this. So D is the distance between them. And uh, the force becomes this, okay, the magnitude. Where did this come from? It's uh, IDL cross B. But uh, in terms of magnitude, it becomes the magnitude of the current times the magnitude of the magnetic field times the magnitude of the length times sine theta. Okay? So this is the total force. And uh, sine theta can actually be Sine theta will actually be uh, cancelled. Alright, so I won't reveal how. No, I'm just kidding. Right. So, uh, sine theta is cancelled because the expression for B also has a sine theta term, which cancels this. Okay. And then uh, we get this expression. And then we have this expression for the for, for the uh, total force on filament two. So the force per unit length, just divide L, becomes this expression. Right? Oh wait, sorry, sorry. Uh, let me let, let me repeat that. Sine theta is will not be cancelled. Okay. Sine theta will not be cancelled. Uh, actually, sine theta becomes 1. Okay. Sorry, sine theta becomes 1 because the angle between them is uh, 90 degrees. Okay? So, the angle between your magnetic field and your force at this point is 90 degrees. So, let's, uh, let's look at that. Uh, due to the current here, the magnetic field direction at this point is here and the current is flowing here so applying the right hand rule the force is in this direction right and at any point on the length the uh, the magnetic field and the direction of the current are always perpendicular to each other therefore sine nine sine theta is always one so sorry uh, I, I I apologize for that blunder okay and uh, you that's how we got this expression right here and the force here is that they repel each other. Okay? The force here is that they repel each other. Okay. So that is the uh, magnetic force due to parallel state wires. Next is the force on a closed circuit. So as you know, um, your wires, if you have a current carrying wire, there's always a return path for the current. So consider a closed circuit, then subjected to a uniform magnetic field so there is some uh, magnetic field that is outside of this loop okay so uh, for a non-uniform magnetic field uh, this or uh, this may or may not be the case the force may be equal to zero but the torque is generally not equal to zero Okay, so how do you know that? So let's go back here. So the force can be zero due to the closed loop. 
since the opposing forces there are opposing forces in different directions therefore it's zero okay, that's for a magnetic field that is into the page going into if I have a magnetic field uh, to the right the force at this point is going into the page the force at this point is going out of the page since they are in different directions the total uh, force in this direction is zero okay and since this current is uh, aligned with the magnetic field there's no force that is acting on these parts of your closed loop okay so if if we have this uh, if the magnetic field is crossing this area okay the total force is zero and there's no movement but if the field is actually um, on the area of your uh, closed loop okay it's perpendicular to the area vector of your closed loop you create a magnetic torque okay so the field pushes this element into the page the field pushes this element out of the page okay. so so just recall first the, the torque quantifies the rotation of a rigid body so if uh, let f be the force applied on the rigid body and r be the position of the vector from the point of the rotational center where the force is applied the torque is equal to r cross f okay. so the torque is equal to r cross f so you point your uh, you first go from your rotational point to the point of application of the force okay that's your r and um, curl that r to the direction of f where your thumb is pointing that's the direction of the torque Okay, so if we have two points with uh, different forces, okay, at uh, this point to this point, we have a rotation, uh, a torque of, a uh, positive torque of uh, something like this. And this force right here also creates a torque at that point. Let's say they have opposing, uh, they have the same magnitude but opposite directions. So we, the total torque at this point, we just add the torques of the individual forces. Assuming they have the same magnitude and different directions, the torque becomes this one. And R1 minus R2 here is the distance between this point and this point. So the total torque becomes R21 cross F1. So this is how you'll get the torque. Okay. So uh, for example, consider a very small square current loop subjected to a magnetic field. Find the forces on each segment and the torque. First, you need to find the force. Okay. So your magnetic field is going into the surface. All right. So the differential uh, force on uh, this part of the circuit is equal to I dx. So the current is flowing to the positive x cross B sub 0. So that's I dx ax hat. <coughs> Excuse me. And your magnetic field is uh, some magnetic field. B sub 0 x a x hat plus B sub 0 y a y hat plus B sub 0 z a z hat. So uh, cross multiply this a x hat into each term, you get this expression right here. Okay. So R1 is equal to negative 1 half d y a y hat. How did you get that? The direction of R1 is from here to here. <coughs> Excuse me. So the direction of R1 is from here to here. It's in negative AY hat and it's negative one half. Okay. 
since it's uh, from the middle of the loop okay and going towards this so it's half of the loop one half dy so differential torque is equal to r1 cross df1 okay and then that's negative one half dy a y hat cross this expression for <coughs> df1 which is this And the total torque on uh, filament 1 is equal to this expression right here. Negative 1 half dx dy i v sub 0 y times ax hat. Similarly, at the other side, for 3, you can solve for the torque due to the magnetic field. Right? And you'll have a similar expression actually. But this time, you're moving in the negative ax direction and uh, the, radio, the r vector is positive dy. Okay. Positive dy a y hat. So the total torque, okay, if we add the torque on 1 and 3, is equal to this expression right here. Negative dx dy i b sub 0 y ax hat. Similarly, it can be shown that we get uh, this expression for uh, T2 and T4. But this time, it's dx dy positive i times v sub 0 x. So the x component of the ay hat. The total torque, total differential torque, is equal to this expression right here. So b sub 0 x times ay hat minus v sub 0 y times ax hat. And this expression inside is actually az cross b sub 0 so az cross b sub 0 from here okay, if you remember we have a generic electric uh, magnetic field okay, that's uniform if we uh, get the cross product of az to this expression az cross ax hat is b sub 0 x a y hat az cross a y hat is negative b sub 0 y a x hat and az cross az here is just 0 so that is equal to this expression right here. And this is actually ds. Okay. dx dy times az hat. This is actually ds. Okay. How? So this is uh, your area. Okay. dx times dy and add a direction to that. This is actually your ds. So the torque is equal to i times ds cross B. Okay? So, the expression for your differential torque is actually related to your magnetic field. Okay? For the differential force, it's equal to IDL. But for your differential torque, it's actually I ds cross B. Okay? So it will only apply to a loop of current. Okay? Because a loop of current encloses a surface. But for a filamentary current, it doesn't enclose anything. Okay? So ds is the area vector. We define then what we call a magnetic dipole moment, dm, to be equal to, actually, that, that is just IDS. So, a magnetic dipole moment is created due to a loop of current. And if a magnetic field is applied to that, well, this, di this dipole moment will actually spin. Okay? And that is your magnetic torque. Okay? So, this is the end of part 1 of lecture 8 and the end of the coverage for long exam 2. So, I hope I have uh, explained it here uh, explain the concept here uh, good enough so you'll understand but always if you have any question just leave it in the comment section below
and I will answer it as soon as possible. Okay? I will answer it as soon as possible. So, uh, thank you for listening. Hope to this. Uh, I hope to see you in class, discuss with you, and uh, see you when I see you.